It's Tennessee. Oh, oh my goodness. Look at all these different kinds of mustard we have right here. We, we've got my favorite hot dog mustard, which is French's, the good old yellow mustard. And we've got a little uh, specialty mustard here, a Dijon mustard, along with a coarsely ground whole seed mustard. This is like a German mustard. And I got to tell you, I've never seen this before in my entire life until I was getting ready for this episode. Sriracha mustard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to this one in just a moment. But then uh, we've got some must, ground mustard, powdered mustard. Did you know mustard comes in a powder as well as in like this condiment kind of preparation? Well, we've got mustard powder and look right here. We've got mustard seeds. And you know, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Thank you for joining us here at SSC Live TV. Dr. Ken Jobst will be discussing how your dietary habits can assist you in your spiritual goals. Welcome to Taste and See. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taste and See on SSC Live TV. Every week we take a little excursion to the intersection of faith and food, and this week is no exception. This week we're talking about, you got it, we're talking about mustard. Absolutely. I'm in the Gospel of Matthew, I'm long about chapter 17, and here's, here's a little episode that I'm reading in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 20 says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to Jesus, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you may say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, that's Matthew chapter 17. Remember the context. We're talking about the disciples not being able to cast out a demon, and then Jesus comes along and casts out the demon from the epileptic child. There is, in the Gospel of Matthew, another mention of mustard seed. This one comes from Matthew chapter 13. This is the parables chapter in the Gospel of Matthew. Another parable Jesus put forth to them, it says in verse 31, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Now, Gospel of Matthew, two mentions of mustard seed. And you know what? Just because, just because, 
I did bring along a, uh, well, my, my little handy can of uh, mustard seed. And you know, mustard seed might be used in pickling, which is, is how we used it. We had an episode on pickles not long ago, and we had mustard seeds in those pickles. But today, I'd like for you just to uh, have an understanding of the size of a mustard seed. So if we're going to be able to kind of zero in on this one, there, there's a whole bunch of them in this little can. You can hear them kind of shaking in there. A couple of them want to come out and I'm, I'm just going to bring them out into my hand. But then I'm going, oh, watch this. I'm just going to put a couple of them right down here. Look at that. I have a nice little row of mustard seeds there. I've got two, four, six, seven mustards. Isn't that nice? That's a nice little biblical number of seven. So, by the way, here's, just so you've got a little perspective, here's my standard size, you know, pen, my little writing instrument. And the mustard seed, well, let's see here, I'm gonna, the mustard seed is right there compared to my, my ballpoint, and you know, it's a medium point pen. So that gives you a good idea. Here's my pen alongside all those mustard seeds seven of them. So in, in the 13th chapter of Matthew, the emphasis is on how small a mustard seed is. Jesus says, that, hey, they're the least of all the seeds. And yeah, you know, technically, come on, you might be able to find a smaller little seed somewhere. Turnip seed's pretty small. But, but Jesus is using kind of just a, this figure of speech. Look, it's the least of all the seeds you're going to find which also means nobody much cares about a mustard seed. It's little teeny tiny seed, right? Okay, that's the emphasis in chapter 13. The emphasis is that it starts out small, but then it grows crazy big. It, it grows even bigger than you would imagine it to grow. You would think that a mustard plant, come on, it's an herb. Maybe you'll grow a little shrub, Jesus says, no, watch this. It'll grow big enough so it will be a home for the birds of the air. Wow, okay. Now, take your chapter 13 knowledge and put it over here for just a second because we want to go back to chapter 17 where Jesus is casting out the demon that the disciples couldn't cast out. Now, let, let's, let's look at this once again. A man comes to Jesus, kneels down in front of him, says, my kid has epilepsy, he falls into the fire, he falls into the water, he's having such a rough time, can you cast out the demon that's causing this? And by the way, I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't cure him. Hmm. So, so Jesus says, oh, faithless, and perverse generation. That may mean, means twisted. You know what? You're faithless. You don't trust God. And you're twisted. You know, you, you got your mind. You don't, you don't have your mind right. So Jesus says, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long can I bear with you? Bring the child to me. Jesus rebukes the demon, comes out of him, and the child's cured from that very hour. The disciples come up to Jesus and say, What's up? Why could we not cast out that demon? And Jesus says, because of your unbelief. And, and, and watch, watch. I'm sure all the disciples were saying, what do you mean my unbelief? You know, um, for assuredly I say to you, Jesus says, which in the King James Version is translated, amen, amen, or verily, verily, right? Okay. Verily I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here to there and it'll move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, friends, uh, it, it's going to take a minute to get our chapter 13 mind off and put our chapter 17 mind on. No place in chapter 17 does Jesus say anything about the mustard seeds being small. It's not about having a little tiny bit of faith. It's about an absolutely different characteristic of the mustard seed. 
And, and hold on because you're, you're, you're about to get blessed here. The mustard seed that Jesus is referring to in chapter 17, you know what? It, it, it's the basis of all these products right over here, right? But why are there all these products? Because this. Because mustard is an irritant. What? Mustard in Bible times was not used so much as a condiment. It was used in seed form. Some folks may have ground it up and added it to, to certain things, but by and large, mustard was medicine. You may have heard way back in the day, uh, well, maybe not too far back in the day, of, of people using what was called a mustard plaster. Uh, and, and the mustard plaster was, was, was basically this. It was a bunch of little mustard seeds, and I'm gonna put them in my mortar over here. Let me gather them all up. All of you guys, get in there. Now, one more. You know what, I'm just gonna leave him out for old time's sake, so we can keep him. I'm, I'm gonna pour out a few more of these mustard seeds, and I'm gonna put them right in the mortar. And I've got my pestle, um, and, and watch this. Watch this, here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to get in here with my pestle and we're going to crush, oh my goodness. They don't like to be crushed, but they're, oh, all the weight is coming down right on them. And I'm gonna stir this around and I've got the grinding of, of stone on stone. And you know what, before very long, whoo, I'm there already. I'm there already. We have taken mustard seed and we have produced mustard powder. Now the old folk would take mustard powder and they might mix it with something like buttermilk. Put a little buttermilk in here with the mustard powder and then they would put that on a cheesecloth and if you had a cold or the grip or consumption or rheumatism or, or muscle ache or, or the ague, whatever it was, they'd put that poultice and, and strap it on you, right? They, they'd take that little bandage and they would soak it in the buttermilk and the, the, the mustard solution. And then they, they would put it on you. If you had a chest cold, they'd put it on your chest and they'd, they'd wrap it on there so it would stick on there. And you know what? You'd be okay for about five minutes, but uh, about five minutes into that mustard plaster, it would start burning it would start irritating you. And oh mercy, let me tell you, the, the, the itch that came along with that thing. Now, I've ground up this mustard seed, and watch, mustard seed, as long as it's just a mustard seed, is perfectly benign. I'm gonna take a smell there, it actually smells nice, mildly aromatic, not bad at all. But now in my mortar with the pestle, I have crushed them. And ooh, watch this. Okay, here it goes. Oh yes. Now, with with the, the it's it's strong. I'm just going. It's really strong, but um, it's not quite wasabi strong, but it's close enough. Wasabi is basically Japanese horseradish, right? And, and I want you to remember that in Bible times, in, in the ancient Near East, they didn't have chili peppers. Right? Chili peppers are a new world plant. So all of the uh, you know, Tabasco peppers, the jalapeno peppers, uh, serrano peppers, all of those hot chilies that have capsaicin in them. You know, they were not in Jesus' part of the world back in the day. They had to wait to discover the new world to bring those back. But if you wanted hot, if you wanted spicy, if you, if you needed this irritant kind of thing to help break up a chest cold, mustard is what they used.
know that nearly 75% of high school seniors are accepted to their first college of choice, but only a little over half can afford to attend, according to a recent study. The outcomes prove the need for college-bound students to consider tuition costs alongside of program offerings. Simmons College of Kentucky offers five degree concentrations and in 2018 was named the most affordable HBCU in the nation. Simmons College of Kentucky, creating the next generation of thinkers. You know what? I'm going to tell you now, here's a fairly easy recipe. If you want to make mustard, like yellow mustard or Dijon or one of these others, the first thing you need to do is get some mustard seeds and crush them. And then, depending on how you're, uh, you know, how you're persuaded, you put a little vinegar in there, might put a little, uh, you know, a little white wine in there. Uh, some people, look, somebody over here put sriracha sauce in with it. But you can make your own mustard uh, very, very easily. So it's, it's mustard and it's a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, basically mustard seed and let me say salt. Put just a little bit of salt in it with the vinegar. And you know, sometimes a little bit of something else, maybe a little buttermilk, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, wine, little champagne, something like that, and you can make a perfectly serviceable mustard. But the reason Jesus is talking about mustard in Matthew chapter 17 is because he's telling the disciples that your faith should be like a mustard seed. And he's not saying that your faith should be small. He's saying that your faith should irritate. Your, your, your faith should should kind of, um, what's irritation mean? Irritation means it should make you a little uncomfortable. How uncomfortable? It should make you uncomfortable enough so you do something. A faith that is only in your head and not in your heart does not have transformational power. The, the, it, the devil can quote scripture, right? So Jesus is saying, that our faith needs to be mustard faith. It has to be faith that has enough irritation to it that it's gonna get things done. Now, let me ask you this. In terms of irritation, who needs to be irritated by the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, number one, each and every one of us needs to be irritated by the gospel. We need to be, be able to not, uh, as I've heard said before, sit on our blessed assurance. We need to actually get out and make the changes in the world that are demanded by righteousness and faith in the gospel. So Jesus said, look, you're, you are the salt of the earth. Salt preserves things. He said that you're, you're the light of the world. Light illumines. But Jesus is also saying that your faith your faith needs to act like mustard. Now, you know what? Little boy in this particular passage of scripture, he had epilepsy. Everybody figured there's nothing that can be done for him. But he was suffering terribly. Falling down in the fire, falling down in the water, having to watch him 24 seven to be sure that he's gonna be okay. And then the, the, the loving father of this child comes to the disciples and says, you got to be able to do something. And, and the disciples, well, I don't know. For one reason or another, they couldn't muster the authority to cast out this demon. And so this child, young child, left in this situation. Now... So upon encountering Jesus, Jesus says, look, a faithless and twisted generation, a generation that doesn't act on the faith that they have is a twisted generation. Thinking that, oh, I've got the faith, but somebody else will do it. 
I've got the faith, but it's somebody else's responsibility. I've got the faith, but all I have the faith to do is to, to, to sing a couple of hymns on Sunday morning. Oh no, no. Jesus is telling us, if you wanna cast out demons and stuff, if you wanna have an impact on the world around you, if you wanna fight injustice, if you want to snatch life from the jaws of death, it's going to take some mustard seed faith. It's going to take faith that irritates. It's first going to irritate the beholder, right? The person with the faith has to get irritated first. I, I'll tell you what, you, you can tell the irritated folk because the irritated folk can't sit still. The irritated folk recognize that, oh man, there, that something's got to be done and it's got to be done soon and I'm the one that God put in this spot and so it looks like God's setting me up to do this thing. Oh, mercy. Now, watch, watch. One person gets irritated, then that irritation might rub off on somebody else. You know what? Uh, <laughs> used to be we all lived in much smaller homes, you know. Used to be if one person was sick, everybody was around them, right? Like, like they're up in the bed and, and everybody comes around. When that old mustard plaster was, was on the person who was ill, whoo, let me tell you, those, those mustard vapors, right? They, they went through the whole house and there wasn't anybody in the house that didn't get a good whiff of the irritating mustard vapor. Now, now I've got to tell you what, you, you, you've heard back in World War I, right? There, there was a, a, a weapon and it was a weapon called mustard gas. And it, it wasn't really a gas, right? It was a chemical that was dispersed in tiny, tiny droplets. But the, the bottom line of it was, it was profoundly irritating. How irritating? So irritating that it became outlawed as a weapon of war, that irritating. Now, now watch. What we're called to do is to go into the world and you know, stir some things up that need to be stirred up with respect to righteousness, with respect to justice, with respect to fairness. We're, you know, sometimes people misquote the Bible and, and, and sometimes they get it almost right, but not quite right. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus makes a statement. He says, blessed are the peacemakers, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, you want, you, you want to make peace in the world, you got to get out there and do some stuff. It's a big world. There's a lot of places that need peacemakers. So many of us have misread that little line in the Sermon on the Mount. We thought Jesus said, blessed are the peaceable. You know, the, the people that don't make waves. The people that are going to go along to get along. The, the, the people that are, are you know, not, not going to cause a ruckus or a fuss or anything. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Blessed are the peacemakers. You got to get out there, roll up your sleeves. You might get your hands dirty. But the bottom line of it is that you're going to be doing the will of God. Because what's the Lord's prayer say? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I got to tell you what, Jesus, Jesus was right on the money with the, the mustard seed faith. Now in chapter 13, right, it begins very small. You can start out with just a little tiny bit of faith and it'll grow. But in chapter 17, we see that it's that mustard seed faith that is an irritant in order to get stuff done. Now, okay, that, that, that's some Bible mustard. I thought I, I wanted to spread around the Bible mustard a little bit before we turn to the regular mustard right here. And, and you know what, I've said this at the very top of the show, uh, good old French's yellow classic mustard. I gotta tell you what, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you can still get a big jar of mustard for a little more than a buck 
You know, that's, that's amazing. When you consider how many little mustard seeds go in it, that's, that's remarkable stuff. And uh, you, you know what? Mustard adds a particular flavor to so many things that you might not expect mustard to be in. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to that at another time. This is a little jewel right here, the uh, Dijon mustard. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the ad campaign that came along probably 20 or 30 years ago. Do you have any gray poupon? Right, so D Dijon mustard is a little smoother. Uh, it, it, it has a very diminished bite to it. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, all kidding aside, French's mustard has most of the bite taken out of it. Uh, Dijon has even more of the bite taken out of it. Stone ground German mustard, it's good on pretzels, it's good on bratwurst. I recommend it to you in, in those regards. But it's, it has not even ground up the seeds. It throws the seeds in the mix and then leaves it to you to, to grind them with your, your molars, right? So it's, it's in your mouth that you get this little flavor explosion. Uh, you know, it, it's a good theory. The trouble is, you know what? Your, your nose is as important to flavor and taste as your taste buds are. So, uh, you know. Now, here's an interesting, thi interesting thing happened with the uh, Golden's mustard, the Sriracha. It's as if they took out some of the bite of the mustard and put in some bite of a garlicky pepper sauce. Kind of a semi-sweet, hot, pepper, garlic, mustard combination. And I, I will, I'll say this, that there's a, there's a particular type of hot dog, right? Sold in England called currywurst. And this, this is pretty close to a currywurst sauce. And I, I recommend it to you in that regard. Powdered mustard, now let, let, me, let me come back. These are the mustard seeds, right? So we've got the mustard seed, but this is pre-ground mustard. And this comes as a powder. And let me tell you, the mustard powder, oh my goodness. Uh, now, look, I was careful doing that because as often as not, it'll just like take my breath away. Mustard powder is one of the classic sneeze makers of all time. And I'm, I'm still waiting for the, the sneeze effect if it's gonna come up. Mustard is like, you know, very finely ground black pepper in its ability to make a lot of different people sneeze. At the store, you might find something called Coleman's, C-O-L-E-M-A-N-S, Coleman's mustard powder. And the idea behind Coleman's is that you're just going to take like a, a teaspoon or a half teaspoon of the mustard powder, mix it with vinegar yourself or put it in some sort of uh, cooking by yourself. And, and that's how Coleman's mustard works. But I tell you what, do you have a favorite thing to put mustard on? Is mustard one of your favorite condiments? Uh, I, I'm a big fan of a combination of mustard and relish and chopped onion to go on hot dogs and bratwurst and metwurst and those sorts of things. And it's not that long away until we'll be able to fire up the grills once again. Well, I tell you what, Jesus knew mustard. He knew what the deal was on mustard seeds, that no matter how tiny they may appear, they can grow into something enormous. And don't be fooled by their size. Mustard can pack an incredible wallop. Well, once again, for Taste and See, my name is Ken Jobst. It has been a delight to be with you. Let other folk know about the program and, you know, be an inviter. Until next time, this is Ken Jobst with SSC Live TV. Thanks a lot and have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.